Hey gang, welcome back to another video. We're taking a bit of a detour this week because we're not talking about a prop build or a faux painting technique. But instead I want to share with you something I recently learned on how to improve the overall dimensionality of my Haunt audio using one simple trick. So let's get to it. There's a variety of digital audio workstations on the market, but this approach uses Logic Pro, which you can get a free 90-day trial of for both Mac and Windows computers, which should be more than enough time to create a soundscape for your Haunt. This video won't cover all there is to know about audio mixing and sound design, but it's a good place to start if you have some of the basics down. So let's jump right into it. As you can see, I already have six audio tracks in my main window timeline. It's a collection of sounds that would fit many haunt scenarios. If you needed to add additional tracks or sounds, you could do so first by clicking on Track, New Audio Track, and a new track will be added to the main window. If you just needed to add the audio, click File, Import Audio, and select your audio file to add it to an existing track. Now we don't need this track or audio file, so we'll get rid of them. Now that our main window is tidied up, let's do a quick check to see what's on each track and how they sound without any adjustments. Starting with track 1, there's a wind sound effect. Track 2 are crickets. Track 3 is a church bell. Track 4 is a crow. Track 5 is a thunder crash. And track 6 is the sound of ghosts. There's currently no additional processing done to any of these files. They're simply dropped into the timeline and spaced out in a way that's pleasing to the ear. Now I could really get into the weeds here about mixing, but I won't make you sit through all of that. I'll just get right to the point. Typically, we've only had options of panning left, right, or center for our audio, and have relied on speaker placement to help give more depth to our mix. But there's a feature in Logic Pro that allows the option of binaural panning. Now before you say, what's binaural panning, allow me to explain. Binaural panning is a method that emulates human hearing by allowing you to position the direction of a signal source so that your ears perceive the sound as coming from either front, behind, above, below, and to the left or right of the listening position when using a stereo output. Let me show you what I mean. Our first track, which is the sound of a windy night, would typically be panned center to create the widest stereo spread. However, traditional panning doesn't allow for vertical placement of sound like you can get with binaural panning. So to activate this option, right-click on the panning knob down in the mixer window and select binaural panning. Then double-click on the knob to open up the panning window. This graphic representation helps to indicate where in physical space your sound is originating. So you can drag it near or far, up or down, and the software will create the emulation of how our ears would perceive the sound. For something like wind or rain, I would typically pan this track as wide and as high as possible, since those types of sounds in real life cover a wide area. I would also change the size to help give it more depth. With a sound like crickets, I'd go lower to the ground in front of the listener and a bit more narrow to create a sense of close proximity. Additional sounds like this church bell or a crow can get pushed far off into the distance, as if it's blocks away or pulled very close as if it's in front of the listener. So that's the basics behind binaural panning. One last trick that makes binaural panning even more interesting is the use of automation. 
I can record a performance of the binaural panning in real time, which will then be played back exactly as I performed it. This also works for volume and effects, but I'm trying to keep from getting too deep into the audio talk. To accomplish this, select the track in the main window with the audio file that you want to have movement. You'll see some new options appear. In the drop down menu that says Read, select the option Touch. When you start the playback of your mix, you can create movement using the puck in the binaural panning option window, and those movements will be recorded and played back once you're done. Cool effect, right? We can create a variation on this binaural effect by switching from spherical to planar, which will control the audio volume as you pan from left to right. This gives the feeling of a sound moving past the listener, or in our case, a crow swooping in towards our head. Now let's take a quick listen to everything together. Now this is just scratching the surface of audio mixing, and the effect created using binaural panning won't be as dramatic over speakers as it is over headphones, but it will increase the depth of your mix, and honestly it was just too cool not to share. Well that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something.